Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live video. And today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Honey Bee Home Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the bundles in the current Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog, uh, which is a great catalog and one of my favorites. So, so um, I love this bundle and um, goodness, I'm knocking all sorts of things over I'm trying to, <laughs> to move things around and I'm just making a mess. So, all right. So this is the card we're making today. It's kind of a super simple little card. And, um, but like I said, hopefully you like it. Just used kind of things from the product suite, added in a little bit, um, a couple of tags, and that's kind of it for the card. It's pretty easy. So, hey, Donna and Linda and Bree, and I think I saw Karen hopping as well, and Pam, thanks for joining, and Elise is here, and Barbara. So yay, it looks like we're getting a good crew that's hopping in here and saying hello. So I appreciate y'all being here. Um, so yeah, that's the card. Like I said, just a little layering of designer paper, a little uh, scalloped edge, a couple little die cuts on it, and it's done. So that's kind of, you know, Amy style card. Super simple. <laughs> that's how I like to stamp. So hey, Danette and, Ka and Catherine, thanks for joining. All right, so this is the Honey Bee Home stamp set, which again is in the current mini catalog that we have. Um, it's got, I love the sentiments in this one. It's got just things that are a little different, um, not just your typical, uh, I like you, whatever kind of sentiments. So so definitely some, some good ones in here. Love the mixed fonts on them as well. So hey, Carol, thanks for joining and good afternoon to you too. So, um, and it's got a coordinating die set, which you know, you know, the minute it's bundled, pretty much I'm sold. So um, so there are some dies that cut out some of the stamped images, the all the little bee images, the flower images. I actually, all three of the flower images all have dies that go with them. And then there's some accessory pieces. There's um, this little, little, I don't know, is it stem of flowers, whatever you want to call it, little set of flowers. And then there's this one that looks a little like grass. And then there's another little set of flowers. So again, um, these are the honeybee blooms, honeybee bloom stamps or dies, I believe is what they're called, but they're bundled together and you get 10% off if you order them um, as the bundle in the current mini catalog. A um, couple other things that I used on this is the TaylorMade Tags dies. These are in the current annual catalog and they're just a standalone die set and they're awesome. If you don't have them yet, you need to get them. <laughs> so, um, because they fit just around a lot of sentiments, um, great for layering, great for tags, obviously, if you need gift packaging and that sort of thing, they're great for that. Um, and then they've got the little reinforcer pieces that you can cut out and glue on over the top of the openings if you want or need a little extra reinforcement if you're actually gonna hang the tag or just because it looks really cute. So. All right, so we have those. Those are the tailor-made tags dies. And then the other set of dies that I used in this, actually, I didn't, I only used the scallop border die from this. <laughs> these are the peony dies. And again, these are from the current annual catalog. Um, but again, I just used, I love the, the double scallop where it's got the scallop that cuts and then the one that embosses. Hopefully you can see that. Um, again, if you can't see it on here, hopefully you'll be able to see it in the pictures on the card uh, tomorrow, on my blog tomorrow. All right, so a couple of other reminders before we get going. The savings are in bloom. Um, promotion from Stampin' Up! is going on right now where you get 20% off of the mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and 20% off a whole host of bundles um, that are in the catalog, in the current annual catalog. So lots of good deals in the 20% off of the bundle is a really good deal. There are a couple of products that they've rebundled that were not bundled and you've given you 20% off those prices. So anyhow, it's it's a really good, good, good sale. So if you don't have these bundles, make sure you're picking them up. This is going on for the month of March only uh, from Stampin' Up! So get on ordering them if you don't have them yet. Um, in addition to that, I'm offering a little ordering bonus where if you order $50 or greater, any Stampin' Up! merchandise, it doesn't have to be the sale items only, um, you're going to earn a big bundle tutorial from me. Um, so I've got seven different stamp set bundles that we've done tutorials for, and each one has five to six projects in the tutorial. So there, I think, are 30 plus, I know there are more than 30 projects in there. I don't, I, I really need to go count, but I know there are way more than 30 projects. Um, so you get this if you place an order of $50 or greater through my online store during the month of March. Um, so that's another little added bonus. Um, a couple of these are, these are all, are all uh, tutorials that we've had in the past. Um, so some of them do have products that are retired in them, uh, but I, you can still take the basics of the card design, put on some different designer paper, and you're all set. So let me know if you have questions on that. Again, the details will be on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. And then the last thing, we've got the Waves of the Ocean product collection, which is available now from Stampin' Up. This is an early release uh, set of products. 
The stamp set and dies, the bundle, are going to be in the new annual catalog, the upcoming annual catalog, which starts in May. Um, but they've added some additional products that are beautiful with it. If you looked at my blog post today, you saw some beautiful cards that were made by some of my team members with it. Um, they've got the Ways of the Ocean 12x12 Designer Series paper, Blue Foils 12x12 Specialty paper, and the Rhinestone Waves Basic Jewels. These three items are actually only while supplies last through May 2nd. So if you want any of these, order them soon. I know they've been selling pretty well, so I don't know if they will last all the way till May 2nd. And if you want to make sure you get them, order now. Um, as I said, the stamp set and dies will be carrying forward and the bundle pricing into the next annual catalog, um, but you're still going to want it early because it coordinates beautifully with all the other products. So just get it all. Trust me, you're going to love it. All right. Um, le again, let me know if you have questions on that. The details of all this are going to be posted on my blog tomorrow, as well as links to the, the um, sale and to the ways of the ocean products. So if you have any questions on that, it's all on my blog. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with a thick basic white card base, and this one is cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. Um, this is a basic card that will also work with your standard issue um, book fold card, which would be a five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. That's a lot of numbers. Hopefully I said them all right. <laughs> but your standard issue kind of book fold um, card will also work with this. Um, the card base will also work with this card. So there's no particular reason other than I like this, uh, the top opening cards better. Just my personal preference. Um, but there's no reason why you have to do it this way if you prefer the side opening cards. All right. So I've got a piece of Heart and Home Designer Series paper. And it's one of the wood grains. And I do love the wood grains. <laughs> I know many of you are the same. Um, but I do love the wood green papers and I can't stop using them. So I have just adhered a piece that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half and covered the entire card front. Um, again, all the measurements will be on my blog tomorrow and I will link that up here in this video so that you can um, find the details in case I say anything wrong, because a lot of times I do, I start talking and then I give you the wrong numbers and uh, sometimes I even type the wrong numbers. Usually they're right on my blog. 99% <laughs> of the time. So, and if anything looks crazy, you're always welcome to, you know, reach out and let me know that something doesn't add up right. So, all right, so I've got a piece, again, this is Heart and Home Designer Series paper, and this is Garden Green cardstock. Um, this one is cut to about two and a half by about five and an eighth. And then I've got the Garden Green um, cardstock that's cut to about two and five eighths inches by about five and a quarter inches. And I'm just gonna adhere the two pieces together hopefully straight and centered. That's usually what I try for. Um, then to add the little scalloped edge on it, I find it easier when I'm using these scalloped dies. I, the, when I first started using them, I would cut, you know, if I wanted to put a scalloped edge on this, I would cut a wide piece of cardstock and then I would try to get this placed in the right spot and get it to run through the machine straight and cut nicely and I could never get it to work. So I came up with a little trick <laughs> that, uh, hey Karen, thanks for joining. So I came up with a little trick and this is how I get my, my borders um, dies to work and to be on the project straight. Um, I just take a little piece of totally separate cardstock, same color, and then I just take my die cut and I cut it, and then I adhere it to the back of this. And then you've got a straight edge along the side, and no frustration over you know ruining tons of cardstock trying to get it cut straight because inevitably, I don't know why, um, every time I put one of these border dies through my die cutting machine, it shifts just a hair and then it goes like this and then you're, it's not straight and then you're saying a lot of bad words. <laughs> so so um, that is how I do it. Even if I was gonna put a border on both sides, I would just take two small strips of cardstock, cut them with the same border die and then just stick them on the edges here rather than dealing with the frustration of trying to get this to run through your die cutting machine straight and um, then end up being unhappy. So that is how I do my borders. Hopefully that helps you. All right, I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine, which is off here to my left-hand side. So I'll be off screen for one second. And hopefully y'all are having a great day. Enjoying your Tuesday. We're finally warming up here a little in New Jersey. I've been grumbling about spring because we got snow again over the weekend. And it was cold and it was miserable, <laughs> but spring seems to be back again, at least for the time being. So, all right, so I've got my little border piece cut. And again, you don't have to have any specific size on the, dart, on the little die cut piece that you're gonna do. Um, 
as far as the width of it. The, the height of it, obviously, you want to be the same as the piece that you're going to attach it to, but you can do it even a narrower piece of cardstock if you want that. Um, if you find that it kind of sags or anything underneath it, if you're especially if you're putting one on either side, all you have to do is cut a little strip of cardstock that runs right down the middle of it, stick it on, and nobody can see it, and then you're um, all set and good to go. So, and that'll stop it from sagging. So, all right, so I'm gonna take a little stamp and seal and not very straightly run it along the edge of my panel here. And then I have got my little die cut here and I'm just gonna line the two up, again, lining it up top and bottom, and then trying to get it straight along the edge. That's the main thing. Trying to get it even and straight. And that's it. So that's how I do all of my border die cutting. Anytime I add on a border is I do just, just that. It makes it so, so much easier and so much less frustrating. All right, then I'm gonna take the stamp and seal and gonna run it around the edges of this and adhere it to the card front. And again, just trying to get it somewhat even um, top to bottom and side to side and straight. All right, um, pretty easy so far. <laughs> All right, so I've got a piece of pale papaya cardstock here and I have got the sentiment from the Honey Bee Home stamp set. And I've got Versamark ink and copper embossing powder that we are gonna be using to heat emboss um, the sentiment. And stamping it in Versamark on the pale papaya cardstock. And then we're gonna um, sprinkle the copper embossing powder. And this is from the, the um, Metallics embossing powders. Um, I'm glad that you like the borders and I'm glad that tip is helpful because I'm telling you, Karen, I went through a lot of cardstock and a lot, said a lot of not nice words. When, I, when we first started having a lot more of the border dies, I was so frustrated and then all of a sudden it dawned on me and I'm like, well, duh, Amy, just cut a little piece <laughs> and you don't have to worry about it. So, all right, uh, we're gonna do some heat embossing. So I've got the Stampin' Up! heat tool, which has got two settings on it. There's a level one setting for drying. So if you're doing something um, where it's watercoloring or something where you it takes a little longer to dry, you can use the level one setting. That works sort of like a hair dryer. Um, and then there's the level two setting, which is quite a bit hotter, and that is for heat embossing. So, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully it's heated up here enough that um, it's ready to start embossing. And we're just gonna point it towards once it starts to get shiny and smooth, then you know that it is done cooking. Um, you don't want to overheat it because you can burn your embossing powder, and that's not a real pretty look. Um, so that's it. I'm giving it a second also to, to uh, cool off before I do any die cutting or handling of it because you can also smear your embossing powders if they're still too warm. Um, so I've got one of the tailor-made tags dies, and it's actually the second to the smallest one. And I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna cut my sentiment out with it. Um, don't need to be too particular about how you put it on there. I, I slid mine a little bit to the left yeah, to the left, um, just because I knew I was gonna be sticking the little B on with it, um, but just slide it a little bit to the left and um, it doesn't need to be on there any special way. So, all right, let me run this through the die cutting machine. Maybe, there we go. All right. Let me put my die back on the magnetic sheet before I lose track of that, because I probably will. And then I went ahead, and this is another piece of the hun Honeybee, uh, the Heart and Home, not Honeybee Home, <laughs> Heart and Home Designer Series paper. And I actually had cut it with just the next size up or the second to the largest of the, the um, little tags on the tailor-made tags dies. And I'm just gonna adhere the two pieces together. So just gonna take a little stamp and seal and put it on the back of my, um, pale papaya die cut. And then all I wanna do is line up reasonably well the two, um, the holes in your, your two little tags and then stick it down, stick it together. I just wanted it to be a little offset. Um, it, you know, if you prefer it laying straight on top, you can definitely do that. I like the look of it being a little offset, but I don't know, I'm kind of a little crookedy some days. So, <laughs> all right. Um, then I've got some of the Fresh Freesia 3 8 inch, uh, which ribbon, the open weave ribbon. I've, um, that I'm just gonna take and, Karen, look away. I know it's my snips. And I've cut this way longer than I need it to be, but I do find that if I do that, um, then I can always cut it down. But uh, if I've cut it too short, it does make it rather um, not easy to 
add to it. <laughs> so um, I generally tend to cut my ribbons too long. So I'm going to fold it in half and slide it through the opening at the top of the tag. And then I'm just going to pull the little tails through the loop over here to make it a bit of a knot. And then pull it down tight. And you can kind of adjust it around a little bit if you need to. And then we're just going to trim the tails a little bit because those do seem to be excessively long because I've way cut way more than I needed. All right, so there you go. So that's it for the tag. Um, do I have a ribbon? I do have a ribbon scissors, but they're just not, it, they're, they're not on top of my desk, and that's the, <laughs> that's the problem. I do have some, um, and maybe one day I'll actually remember to put them on my desk when I'm doing a video, but they're just in a drawer, and that's the problem. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. I, I just don't ever think to pull them out. And I'm like, oh, I've got a scissors. I'm set. And then I end up hacking. But this cut kind of, it didn't make too much of a mess, I don't think. <laughs> so I know ribbon scissors are nicer um, because they're sharper. And these um, I've used on paper and everything else. So they're, they don't cut quite as nicely, but I think it cut fine today. <laughs> So, all right, using a couple Stampin' Dimensionals, and I am going to adhere the tag to my card front. And I wanted it lined up so that this was straight, but not quite all the way over to the edge. Close to the edge, but not quite there. All right, and we're just going to adhere that onto the card front. So, oh, thanks, Pat. I'm glad somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> and Rosie's going to send me scissors for my birthday. Well, I appreciate that, and I probably will still never remember to use them. <laughs> so, so unless, maybe I need to get like those old, the things that, well, the librarian in my school used to wear her glasses on these little chains and that had the little clips on the side. Maybe if I got one of those with ribbon scissors, maybe I'd be able to keep track of them. But, <laughs> but anyhow, um, yeah. I get sidetracked. Okay, so I have ahead of time pre-cut a little piece of garden green cardstock with one of the Honey Bee Blooms dies, which, there we go. Um, it's this little die that I used to cut this piece of garden green cardstock, and we're just gonna layer the pieces on here, um, just kind of putting it over the top of my um, sentiment, little, the sentiment die cut, I should say. Um, and then you can see there's a little glue dot hanging out there and that is perfectly fine. I'm paying attention to where I'm putting the glue dots because I'm gonna stick the little B right over the top of the, kind of the center of it. So as long as I keep my glue dots in the center, then I know that they are gonna be covered. Um, and I do find that with the kind of more intricate die cuts like this, sometimes liquid glue and I do not get along very well and um, I make a mess with it and so then you know, it's easier for me to use glue dots anytime that I can. All right, next up, um, the scissor, <laughs> scissors chain, I know. <laughs> scissors around my neck are dangerous. You're probably right. <laughs> I definitely should not run with a scissors around my neck. <laughs> So um, as I was talking and not telling you what I was doing, um, I cut this piece with uh, Fresh Freesia cardstock uh, with another one of the dies from the Honey Bee Blooms dies. And next up, um, the bone folder chain. I don't know, Jamie's got that thing. The bone folder I can usually find. It's just the scissors that I forget all the time. Now I'm all flustered thinking about the scissors chain and running with scissors and I can't even find what I'm looking for. <laughs> all right, so I've got basic gray ink and I've got the little honeybee from the Honeybee Home uh, stamp set. And we're just gonna stamp that really quickly on a piece of basic white cardstock. And you can see I'd already used it to cut out the bee on my previous card. Um, so I've got the little bee stamped and I'm gonna take my light So Saffron Stampin' Blends marker and I'm just gonna color in the little bee uh, body with it. So bee head, bee body down here. And that's going to be the ex extent of my fantastic coloring with the blends today. So the Swiss Army version, I like that I could use. That would be a useful tool for me. You know, like just pull out the handle and it has everything I need. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna grab the coordinating die from the uh, Honey Bee Blooms dies and I'm gonna run this through the die cutting machine so I'll be off screen for a second. Hey, Karen, glad you're here. So thanks for joining. All right, hopefully I can get this lined up and cut straight the first time. All right, 
I think we'll call that pretty good. And I'm going to put my die back on my magnetic sheet before I lose track of that. And then I'm just going to take a little glue dot and stick it onto my B right here in the center. Actually, maybe I'll put two of them on just in case. Kind of stick them side by side here in the center. And then I'm going to put the little B right over the top of my flowers and my little grass die cut and just smoosh it down on there. And then that covered up the little glue dots that I had stick in there to begin with. All right, the next thing, well, almost last thing that I did um, was I added Wink of Stella, and I'm sure you probably didn't see it <laughs> when I held up my card, but just put a little Wink of Stella and brushed it over the wings on the butterfly, and you probably can't see it, butterfly, B, this is definitely not a butterfly, and you probably can't see it um, when I'm doing it here, but I'm just lightly brushing over, and it just adds a little bit of shimmer, and I think a little bit of pretty, um, and I'll hold it up. I don't know if you can see the, the shimmer on the wings or not, but hopefully you can. And then the last thing on the card front is rounded tip kindergarten. See, that's, yes, although I'd probably still stab myself and still cut things off that I shouldn't be cutting off. <laughs> So scissors and I are just dangerous friends, I guess. Um, so the last thing that I'm going to be adding on here is a couple of the um, brushed metallic adhesive back dots, and they are copper in color. So I coordinated it with my um, uh, sentiment embossing. So just added those on, and the card front's done. So pretty easy, pretty quick. Um, on the inside of the card, I kept it pretty simple as well, and I've got my little B, and I'm going to stamp that twice. Oh, thanks, Karen. I'm glad you're liking the card. So I've got my little B and basic gray ink. I'm going to stamp it one time up towards the top, one time kind of down a little bit closer to the bottom. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my um, Stampin' Blends marker and my magical coloring with my So Saffron Stampin' Blends. Just going to do a quick once over and get the body of the B colored on both of them. And then we're going to add a little piece of designer series paper to the bottom of this, and it will be all done. So, uh, thanks. Uh, same with, yes, I'm a mess, I'm telling you. I don't know if it's not easy, then I just don't do it, because I usually make a mess of things. <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't know. I like my stamp and seal, I will say that. Liquid glue is one of those that I use only when I don't, nothing else will work well, um, just because I tend to, it makes a mess. I don't know, it gets all over me and then I'm stuck to my project and nobody needs to see that. So, all right, so I've got a little strip of the uh, Heart and Home Designer Series paper. It's about a half inch wide and it was about four and a quarter long um, and I just adhered it to the bottom and trimmed it down to the size that I needed. Um, and again, I try to do oversized pieces on the little strips that I'm gonna be putting on the bottom just because you can always cut it down, um, but you can't make it longer, so. All right, I'm gonna take that and stick it to the inside of my card with stamp and seal, fold it closed, run the little bone folder across the top, and we're done with the card for today. So that's it, super simple. Um, it's a beautiful stamp set bundle and you definitely all need to get it if you don't have it already. Um, get it and you'll love it. If you have it, pull it out and use it because you're going to love it too. Uh, <laughs> all right, so thanks so much for joining today. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Um, I will plan to be back on my YouTube channel live around 2 o'clock Eastern time on Friday and then back here live on my Facebook channel around 2, 2 o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday. I appreciate you spending part of your day with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, let me know if you have questions. Again, I'll be linking up the blog post uh, with all the specific details about this card uh, in the description tomorrow once the blog post goes live around eight o'clock in the morning eastern time and um, stop by check it out let me know if you have any questions have a great rest of your day and we'll chat soon